We're gonna start filming now. Uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hi. Hello. My name is Bash Harry, and this is the Harry Knit. We do a lot of things about knitting on this channel, so please subscribe if you are not. And before we get started on this haul, I just want to say that this is the Awan vest, which I knitted up. It's open for testing right now, so if there's a tester call, I'll link it in the description and probably in the comments, but if you are interested in test knitting this very chunky mohair vest, feel free to just drop your name off. Um, testing ends or like the closing applications close on the 30th of May, but we may close early because there's quite a few people who have already applied, which is fantastic, but we are looking for 2XL and 5XL. So if you are within that range, or even if you just want to try your hand out and do the other sizes, just leave your information on the Google form and that would be awesome. That's all I want to say. <laughs> it is my first pattern ever that I've like knitted up, graded, uh wrote down f over the course of like a week so i'm really excited to share it with you once it's finally out uh which is hopefully sooner than later um but yeah that's all i want to say how are you how is your day i hope you're doing well if you're waking up i hope you have your cup of coffee like i do uh because it's pretty early where i am today i've got a long day ahead but i wanted to film this video i wanted to film this video for two reasons um the first reason being i have a bit of a haul that if i did it in the podcast next week it would be way too long it'd be like an hour long and the second reason is my laptop crashed <laughs> it didn't crash well it did but long story short i had two videos planned out because I, I film a lot of videos in advance just with my schedule. Uh, I filmed with my sister on teaching her how to knit. It was very intensive, had three cameras back to back, and I filmed on how to make this vest. Um, and you know, it was editing, everything was going well, I had to finalize the video, and then my laptop crashed when my hard drive was connected to it and i couldn't save my hard drive so all of my footage from the past six seven months or so is gone i don't want to say gone i sent it to the service center on monday uh they said they'll try to recover the files within three to five days that was on monday it's saturday I'm not getting my hopes up, but of course I am really scared because that is, you know, I lost footage of how to make this really nice vest, lost footage on teaching my sister how to knit, and that was going to be a very fun, long video. So I kind of wanted to still put something out today or like this week because I missed last week's because of technical issues. So I'm really sorry about that. I think that's the first time I missed a video upload in since January, so it's been crazy. So that happened. Um, and I got very sad for obvious reasons. Took a while for me to recover and relax and things like that, because I'm very, uh, I'm a perfectionist. I'm very type A when it comes to video making. I, I like having, I like planning out what I'm gonna be doing. I like writing the research and the notes, but I think this video is just gonna be super casual, super easy super chill, I'd like to say, even though I'm not a very chill person. I have a bit of a yarn haul. I don't want to say a bit because it's definitely more than anticipated. This isn't even all the yarn. I've got yarn on my table, but I'm just too lazy to put it back in for a thumbnail. Ta-da! But I was paid out for something. And I realized I couldn't use that money for my bank account because it doesn't accept to Brunei. So I decided, you know what would be a good thing? Treat myself after Ramadan 
and kind of just spend some time to purchase yarn, have some time to think of some creative ways to purchase yarn. Although that being said, I feel like I need to start going on a yarn binge because I've mentioned this before, my shelf just does not fit all of my yarn anymore. And I bought a new shelf, which is currently in the room downstairs. Uh, but that room is not even renovated yet. This room isn't renovated yet. So I think I'm going to have to start putting my yarn downstairs. <laughs> just put my stash out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> uh, just to stop me from spending too much on yarn. Because I see things on YouTube and Instagram and I'm very easily swayed on purchasing yarn. And that's what I did today. It's a drops yarn haul. It was majority drops because I think it was on sale when I purchased it. And so I thought, you know what, would be a great idea to do like a mini wool warehouse yarn haul. Uh, I've said it before, a lot of places don't ship to my country and even if they do, they take four to six weeks of waiting and the shipping is expensive so wool warehouse is like a very good um even out you know it takes usually a week with extra shipping but that's completely understandable so i got some yarn that i want to talk about maybe some plans that i have for the yarn itself and maybe some ideas i'd like to share with you whether it be for me creating my own patterns or just patterns that I'm really, really interested in. So if you'd like to see that, please keep on watching. I initially got a few needles as well. I needed to buy some, uh, but there were just very standard Knit Pro interchangeable needles, size seven, eight, nine. I accidentally bought two of size nine, but that is completely fine. Uh, just because I needed it for some chunkier pieces. I usually go for size four to five, even down to 3.5. That's how I started off with my knitting. But lately I've been really getting into chunkier yarn. And so a lot of the yarn that I got is for chunkier needles. So I wanna talk about the yarn now. So let's start off with Drops Wish. This is their, I've got, how many do I have? I have Drops Wish, and this one I purchased for a very specific pattern. Although I'm not sure I needed all of this yarn. I just think it's very pretty. It is Drops Wish in, I believe, denim blue. And it is a mix of baby alpaca, pima cotton, and merino wool. I love working with merino wool. I think that is one of the few wools that we have that is really great for summer, which is what I live in. And it looks like this. This uses nine millimeter needles, 10 stitches, and 14 rows, and weighs about 50 grams, 77 yards. So I approximately have one, two, three, four, five, six balls. So that's seven times six. 35 times 41, 42? I think it's 42. I'm probably wrong, I'm really bad at math. But this one is about 420 yards altogether. And this is definitely one of the more heavier yarns that I've worked with or not have yet worked with. Uh, it is very, very fluffy, as you can see. Looks like this. Come on, zoom in. So this one definitely will use about nine millimeters. And the fibers are quite blown out, all things considered. The reason why I purchased this yarn is because I am grading this pattern. I'm making two sizes. So this is a size S on a 34 inch bust. Um, so it uses Hobby Diablo Multi, which is five stranded and that one's super chunky, but I wanted to recreate it for size one for my sister, who is a 30 inch bust for a size one. Yeah, that'll be 35 inches. And I wanted to make one for her with extra length because I don't know about you, but this is quite cropped. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to make one that was specifically for her for my sister to help model 
in the photos, which would be great. And maybe even have one for myself. That's just a size down because that's recommended in the pattern as well. This one is so pretty. And it's made in Peru. 50% alpaca, like I said. 33% cotton. 17% wool. Wool. I've never actually worked with alpaca before. I think I have a few yarns that are made with alpaca. I think one of them would be my drop sky, but I haven't touched it yet. I want to make some swatches. Um, but this is very beautiful in this color. I'm very excited to work with it, and I'm very curious to see how it knits up. I know it says it's 10 by 14 stitches for 4 by 4, but to be honest, I've realized that when I work in the round, I'm usually off by like one stitch. So I, so the yarn is a bit bigger than anticipated, which is completely fine. I think for me personally, I would rather be slightly looser of a knitter than slightly tighter. I don't want like too much going on in my hands. I hope that makes sense. You know what I mean? But yeah, this one, I've got about six balls of it. And I'm probably going to start using it maybe in the next week or so when we finalize the pattern and I can start knitting for my sister. I do have to knit some swatches for it. But yeah, that'll be exciting. Should I put this away? I feel like I should because there's just a lot of yarn here. The next thing that I got was from Drops as well because the whole yarn haul is from Drops. They're great. This is Drops Melody in, I think, the color Brick. I've got 10 balls of it, actually. This is a mix of wool and alpaca, 71% alpaca, 25% wool, 4% polymade. And this is about 12 stitches by 14 rows. I think this one uses 8 millimeter needles. Yes, it's 8 millimeters. I think on Ravelry, it says it's like a ran or worsted, even chunky, I think. And this yarn is so fuzzy. I don't know if you can see that, but it's such a fuzzy yarn. And I was showing my sister this yarn and she literally said she cannot see where the fibers start because it's just so fuzzy. Because look at that. Just look how it's plied. I'm personally very excited to make this because I want a very nice fuzzy sweater. I know that Kutovika, Kukotiva, I think that's her YouTube name. She really recommends Drops Melody and I'm quite excited to work with this as well. I have 10 because I am planning on making a sweater for the fall weather. I say fall very loosely because, I'm, like I said, I live in, near the equator, so a lot of the fall pieces I just wear when it's raining pretty heavily or when it's when I'm staying in a very cold area, like like the studio where it's super cold. Uh, even when I wear like a turtleneck sweater, it's still freezing, <laughs> so I always have to bring a jacket with me. But maybe I'll start wearing sweaters. This one is in the color brick. And surprisingly, I don't have that much red in my closet uh, or my yarn stash, to be honest. Actually, still in my closet as well. I don't have a lot of like wool or red wool. So I'm really keen and curious to try knitting this up. I wish this was a little less fuzzy because I've read some comments in um, Ravelry that they said that this kind of yarn you have to kind of fluff it out oh there's a lot of yarn there i hope it doesn't get my coffee it you kind of have to fluff it out before you wear it because of all the fuzz but i think it'll still be a very unique um yarn to work with and to draft up into a pattern even if i'm planning on like making this i feel like it'd be super super fuzzy and maybe that cloud like finish that i'm looking for and this is a unicolor as well. I think unicolor means it's solid all the way through. And don't get me wrong, I do love working with solids. I think they just keep the piece, the garment, very uniform. But so I do like variegation. I really do. It's just very hard to find here. Uh, except for Kat Kat, who does a lot of the variegated stuff, which I really love. And that one's cotton. But I'm getting 
way off topic now because I'm just talking about yarn and all the things I want to do with it. I will think of making a sweater with this or cardigan. I do have 10 balls of it. So maybe a cardigan would actually be very nice with this. This is 140 meters. So times that by 10, it's about 1400 yards, which I think would be just right for my body frame because I'm a size, I'm usually a size S, even M sometimes. I'll go down to an extra small if it's a really oversized piece. So that's probably what I'll be doing. I'm thinking cardigan or sweater, but we shall see when that happens. Those are two yarns that I purchased and I got some more here. It's not very varied uh, when it comes to yarn because honestly I just purchased in bulk because I've mentioned before since shipping and yarn is quite limited here where I'm from. I do have to uh, think about getting things in bulk because for me it is very hard to view yarn and there's issues with limits of quantity so I think for me personally getting one or two balls is better than having um, not enough for the pattern which I've come to find happens more so than others I'll admit. So let's get started on my drops big merino. This one is in beige and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got ten of these. Oh, you can see them stacking. So this is the Drops Big Merino, which is 100% wool. And I've already said how much I love Merino. This is five millimeters uh, using five millimeter needles. And it is 17 by 22 rows. This is Iran. I know this is Iran weight, worsted weight for the Americans. Is it? I actually don't know. Is worsted British or is it? My brain is all over the place today <laughs> anyway this one is in the color beige which i feel like is very different from what i really do make if you see a lot of the patterns that i work with i either work with very bright colors like the vest that i'm wearing right now or it's um, or it's um pinks blues yellows that's how i tend to go but I mentioned it in one or two videos already that I'm, oh, that's a B. That's a big B. I've mentioned it in a couple of videos before, but I am pretty keen on working with a lot more beiges, something with a more neutral color palette. I really want to also work with more iron weight yarn like these. Not because I don't like working with fingering, but I think when you're working on a project that requires fingering and your whole day or your whole afternoon is focused on working on this specific pattern and you've only gone through maybe three inches in the whole day, it can feel a little tiresome. And so I like to have a nice even uh, distribution of my projects so like I have one fingering project here I have one medium size project and I have one big one that I can work on especially if I'm out of the house because I was working on this while I was out so that was like what I personally like to do so the drops big merino is definitely one of the projects that I'm keen on making either a nice top or a sweater it's always a sweater with me but I so rarely wear sweaters. I might make another vest with this. I feel like this would be a very beautiful um, cable vest and I've seen a few on uh, Instagram from some really amazing people. I'll leave some linked in the description if I can remember a few of them. So this is what it looks like and it's very beautiful. It's very pretty. This one is super wash, and if I'm gonna be honest, 
I still don't know the difference between non-superwash and superwash merino. I think superwash, you can put it in the wash as the name suggests, and non-superwash is when you can't. But for me personally, I try not to wash any of my wools or my knits. If anything, if they smell, I'm going to just slowly soak it and be very, very gentle. The things, the yarn that I have washed would be like my cottons uh, that I know wouldn't stretch or shrink in the wash. And then I always dry my clothes. I never use a dryer. I just always dry them out, um, just letting it hang. It's very common here um, in Brunei. I know people do have dryers, but I just don't like them. I need to start putting some stuff away because <laughs> it's getting crazy because it's getting ridiculous. <laughs> I should note that after this, I'm probably going to go on a yarn diet. I, I said that earlier and I do. I do need to work on a yarn diet because my wallet cannot handle it. Plus, working as a freelancer, you kind of need to adjust your finances because some days I get paid more than others and so sometimes I well I can justify this because of the shipping and everything I also have to be more mindful about what I purchase and all those things <laughs> let's move on to a yarn that I have actually used before and I really loved it it is the Drops Merino Extra Fine in the color Olive. I've worked with this before. I did it for my Daphne Top Test Knit by Friday Knits, who just released her website, so please do check it out. Um, this is in the color Olive. Looks like this. We got one, two, three, four, five, I think there's some more here. Yes, we've got about eight balls of it. Like I said, I really do love working with Merino. It is so pretty and it's so soft too. And this one, I actually have a specific pattern in mind. Back in my last podcast, I did mention I wanted to do um, the boxy cardigan by Friday Knits and that one recommends DK. It just looks absolutely beautiful and I love the collar and the buttons. So I was thinking it would be really cool in like this olive green, yellow green color. Like for the most part, I'm not really a green color person. I don't work with a lot of greens. I don't work with it. It's just not my vibe, but that being said, I think this one's okay because it's slightly more on the yellower side. I think Olive would be a perfect uh, name for this color because it looks exactly like an olive. Looks like that. One thing I've noticed though about my, um, my Daphne top is that it does stretch over time and it does um, elongate. So I have to be wary of that, especially post blocking, especially since what is recommended on the needles may not be the same. So that's something that I have to keep in mind. This one is, of course, a hundred percent merino wool. It uses four millimeter needles and 21 by 28 for the gauge. It's 105 meters and I have eight of that. So it's about 800 something, which most of it is about sweater quantity. As I said before, I like making garments and when it comes to garments, I still have to figure out what's like a perfect number for the perfect garment. I've been researching a bit and most would recommend about 700 to 1000, maybe even 1400 um, when it comes to making garments, depending on the sizes, but I'm still playing around with it. I'm still trying to figure it out. We shall see if I do in the near future. Oh, so those are all the drops, but I completely forgot that I bought, I didn't completely forgot, but this isn't drops. Uh, it is two cones, and let me explain why I got some cones. 
This is the Lily Sugar and Cream Cones, 400 grams, which is a lot. This one is in yellow. This one is in soft ecru. I'm going to remove this so you see it. This is my first scones. Scones? These are my first cones. Um, so it's 400 grams, which is about, I can't read how many meters these are. I will leave it in the description down below, but this uses 4.5 millimeter needles and it is 100% cotton. I'm doing a test knit for Kira on Instagram, leave it down below, and she has this very beautiful summertime tote and in her original pattern she uses Lily Sugar and Cream, which is why I decided to get it because <laughs> honestly I was really keen on trying this yarn out and I think using a bag with this would be incredible. Um, and I know 400 seems very excessive, but as you can probably tell, it's not, not for me. I am probably going to start knitting the pattern up. It doesn't look very difficult. It does use provisional cast on hem uh, and it is a color work bag, which I'm very curious to see how it will look. Oh, my mom calling? Who's calling me? Hello. So that was the service center people. They tried to use four different softwares to recover my hard drive and it's still not doing it. So they're in the fifth one right now. Uh, hopefully I get the footage screaming internally. Good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Where was I? I completely forgot. I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. So Lily Sugar and Cream. This one is in Ecru. This one is in Yellow. And I'm doing it as a test knit. And hopefully once I'm done, I think I'll have plenty more yarn left to spare. I will probably pass it on to my mom because I know she uses quite a bit of cotton for her work, which is very exciting. I think right now though, I do need to start working on the bag ASAP. Um, it's just something that I know I have to start on, especially since it's a very simple pattern, I'd say. It's a lot of color work, um, not intarsia. I, I always call it intarsia, but it's not. It's just stranded color work. But that is the plan. And I'm hoping this too would look nice because I'm doing the daisy pattern and I think it would be very, very cute. Please let me know how to <laughs> save up on yarn because I feel like my collection has grown quite immensely since last year. Like last year I was just working on acrylics using Caron um, and just 100% cotton and now I'm just purchasing a whole array of yarn. But you know a part of me also thinks that you know, I want to enjoy my hobby without feeling guilty. And one of the things that brings me joy is seeing the yarn collection grow and just creating some amazing stuff out of it. And another part of me is like, slow down your horses, Bash. So saying it out to the universe now, I think I'm going to go on a yarn diet. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to go on a yarn diet. So my rule is no more shopping until my birthday in August. I think that's the plan. Okay, no more shopping on Wool Warehouse until my birthday. Because I'll probably still get some Kite Cat because they're arriving today. Oh, uh, yes, no shopping until my birthday. And this is June, July, August. I can handle it. It's just three months. <laughs> and besides, I still have to prepare my room and downstairs for renovations. So my yarn purchases should be on hold for the foreseeable future, not even foreseeable for at least three months. Um, but yeah, I think that is about it from me. Thank you so much for watching. We talk about yarn and all the things fuzzy and fiber related. If you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, if you're interested in test knitting this pattern, the applications will be in the description down below and 
that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you later. Bye!